Greetings everyone, this is Connor from Dagura TV, and in this video I want to talk about how Insomniac Spider-Man for the PS4 has the potential to be one of the best superhero video games. As many of you will know, in September this year, Insomniac releasing their game Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4. They, this is the first time that a license outside of Activision has got the game since I think 2001, I think, was the last time then we had a game that wasn't from published by Activision, because Spider-Man 2 and 3 were from Activision, and... This is the first time in a very, very long time, if I don't get the dates right, I apologise, we're finally getting one out of the hands of Activision who were trying to basically annualise the game near enough to get as many games out as possible until people stop buying it. And we got a slew of bad games from them. We've got things like Shattered Dimensions, uh, Web of Shadows, Edge of Time, Amazing Spider-Man obviously is the one that everyone springs to mind in 2014, which was an absolute calamity. And we've just kind of been waiting around for one to come around again. And with the relevance of Spider-Man being kicked up a notch after Spider-Man Home, Homecoming came out from Marvel last year. Everyone's been kind of yearning to see a new Spider-Man game with him being back into the MCU. And I, in my opinion, Insomniac are the perfect developer to get it done. And the reason for that is, is because they've got a great back catalogue of games, but recently they've shown that style of humour that we can kind of expect from like a Marvel-based game and also from, you know, what we see in the other Spider-Man stuff as well, whether it be comics or TV shows and stuff. And that'll be, you know, the games that they can really show that is in Ratchet and Clank. And in particular, I think the one that can re be relevant most to what Spider-Man could possibly be is Sunset Overdrive and we'll get into gameplay reasons for that in a second but I want to kind of focus on the humour element because that is a huge impact for setting the tone of the game. From the Spider-Man gameplay we've seen so far, it's definitely got that kind of Marvel style look to it, you know, that kind of bright look to it. It's got, you know, huge kind of different amounts of colours in there, you know, you look at Spider-Man suit for instance, you know, the colours that in the saturation of what it's got in there really do stand out on every single aspect of the game screen, whereas when we look at, you know, other superhero games that have come out, even on ones like, you know, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and you'd look at, you know, the Arkham games in the past and everything, they're a little bit more washed out and don't really have that bright spark to them, and that in something is what kind of Spider-Man really wants to be, and really want to have that brightness to it, and we can really see how that's kind of evolved from the Ratchet and Clank game, where that again is another game where it uses utilizes colour very well. But in regards to humour, as I was saying before, it's a key aspect into us really liking the character, because Spider-Man's a funny character, you know, anyone knows that who's seen a film. I know that in something like, you know, the Sam Raimi uh, Spider-Man films that we got was a bit different than what we kind of used to know with Spider-Man, but still, he's still, when he's in the Spider-Man suit, he still has the potential to be kind of bright, funny character that we see sometimes. And, you know, when we get in, when we see him in Spider-Man, this one, we know that Insomniac can kind of pull that off because they've pulled it off with two previous games. And while it's not going to be as sort of immature as Ratchet and Clank, it's still going to have a level of immaturity to it and kind of teen-like, child-like fun to it. Because that's really what the character's like. And in the screenshot they've shown of, you know, Spider-Man taking a selfie and things like that and the little bits of the gameplay we've seen, it definitely seems, that, that seems like that is coming across very, very well. But when I say it's got the potential to be one of the best superhero games, I there's a lot of competition on there in the superhero game field, a lot more than I think people will generally give to remember. But I think we are we are stepping into the time now of public of sorry pop culture in these past five six years, for instance, of being in the kind of the age of superheroes. Not to say that you know there hasn't been good stuff beforehand. You know, like obviously we've had the Dark Knight films and stuff like that. And we've also had in the past you know the eighty nine Batman, the Superman films in the seventies, the Sam Raimi Spider Man, the X Men from the early two thousands, like I've said. But really since the the MCU, it's become really, really kind of popular and not been kind of like this kind of nerdy culture to like superhero stuff anymore. And Spider-Man and the video game industry hasn't really taken a full grasp on that yet, I don't think. While there's been a lot of good ones, you know, and the best ones are by far, in my opinion, the Arkham series, fantastic video games over there. I know people were disappointed with Arkham Knight, but Origins, um, Arkham City and Arkham Asylum unbelievable video games, all, all three of those, and I was a big fan of Knight personally, but I couldn't understand why people didn't. It's time to kind of get more of those franchises to kind of get a grip of what superheroes, pe what people want, and to bring it forward, because, you know, while there's been good games like DC Universe Online, you know, we've got the, in the fighting game genre, we've got the Injustice series and stuff like that, that are really, really good, there's still something lacking there, in my opinion, and I think it's stuff like this, the Insomniac Spider-Man game, or maybe whatever Rocksteady you're making next, whether that is another Batman game, or who knows what that'll be. And also when we find out more about the Square Enix uh, agreement that they've got with Marvel to make kind of like an, it seems like an Avengers game, or an MGU, who knows, but you know, once we find out more about what's going on there, hopefully that can bring them more to the forefront of the video gaming industry. But I can kind of see that really, whilst people were really excited for the 
Batman game and stuff like that. I think that Spider-Man could really bring that a, a whole step forward in regards to being the face of the industry when it comes to superhero games. And I think that, and I think it really does have the potential to be that of being a great game. Another thing I mentioned before in regards to the development team getting it right, they've got great experience with gameplay in regards to how to deal with the Spider-Man game. Because while the biggest criticism of Spider-Man games in recent, probably since Spider-Man 2, was about web-slinging. And while Spider-Man 2 is kind of way too far to go back, you know, in time, when I played that as a child, and Spider-Man 3 as well, to be fair, kind of got it semi-right, the web-slinging where you go around the world and everything felt very natural, very slick, and that kind of remains true to how, what people talk about when they refer back to that game. Whereas when you look at the Activision ones, it just couldn't get it right, it just felt clunky, it wasn't, like, sticking to buildings, it just felt weird, it just felt very, very odd. Whereas... What we can know with Insomniac is that the main reason why it felt clunky in those previous games, sorry, before I go back into Insomniac, is because you can't really handle momentum. You know, once you start to get going, you know, you'd clip into something, you'd crash, and then you'd fall down to the ground. It just felt very, very unnatural. Whereas with Spider-Man, what we've seen in the gameplay so far, they've got ways to get around that by going headfirst into a building. You'll start running up the building, or you'll run across the building, and so on like that. But they could, we know that Insomniac can use momentum really, really well from their game Sunset Overdrive, which basically that game is immensely built around movement and maneuvering around the world and you know getting speed and going around as quick as you can and stuff. And that makes the game a hell of a lot of fun. And that's what people really, really like about it. And they, when I played it, that's what the key aspect that I took away from it is that they really utilised how you move your character and the speed that you're moving at very, very well. And that is a major thing of what's going to be impactful for this Spider-Man game. And I've got full confidence they can do that. And if they can nail that down, because that's a very, very hard thing to do, but people who have you know, play tested and the guys at Game Informer who got to sit down with the game for quite a while have come out and said that, yeah, they've kind of near enough of what they've played so far have nailed it, whether that gets repetitive or so many hours or they'll be able to outline it over the, that period of time a lot more to see what it's going to be like we'll see but in my opinion i don't think there's anything to worry about on that front because when we in this kind of thing when you build the momentum and things like that you can kind of get a gist of whether that feels right or not in the first time you pick up the controller in my opinion it's not something where you play it for a bit and then a few hours you get bored of it it's because it's such a key momentum clue sorry key part integral part of the gameplay loop of what we're going to be experiencing in it. And what I've seen from the web slinging so far, they've nailed it so far. I think the gameplay looks absolutely fantastic. They've got, they've kind of tell they've been inspired a little bit by Arkham and how we're going to be dealing with enemies. You know, that Arkham style combat of having so many around us bouncing from enemy to enemy and that little bit that we saw at E3 this year, it kind of looks like it's focused on that front, which to be honest with you, I'm really happy about. And I think getting stuff like that from Arkham is a big step in the right direction. Obviously, animation-wise, it's going to be very different, whereas, you know, Batman is very much more like the martial arts style of thing. Whereas Spider-Man in particular is definitely going to be on the sides of, you know, very acrobatic, hopping, really utilising his speed and, uh, and sorry, and his flexibility to be able to get around enemies in so many different ways. So having the animations right is going to be very, very important. But so far, what they've shown us, I think they've got that down as well. But the main reason why I think it can really help and the video game sphere of how, you know, Spider-Man could be a major player is because I think it could tie in people from outside, you know, the regular video game players, the more casual players to play it, to find out more about Spider-Man. Because, you know, people are very, very excited about what Spider-Man is bringing to the table in regards to films right now. And if I'm going to be honest, while I love the Spider-Man movies and, you know, the kids that cartoons that I used to watch when I was younger, I don't know a huge amount about what's happening right now in regards to Spider-Man. You know, I have friends that tell me the odd little thing here and there, you know, like Miles Morales and things like that. Like that and they'll tell me little bits here and there and everything but on the grand scheme of things i don't know a huge amount and the same thing applied to batman before the arkham games came out i don't really know that much about batman and then you hear about so many different villains in there and you can read the codex and stuff like that to find out more about it and they were integrated into the game as well you know about finding villains out like the mad hat and things like that who i never knew was part of batman whatsoever and in arkham knight finding things about jason todd and stuff i didn't know any of that stuff before i played this game those games and spider-man definitely looks like it's going to be that because this the villain is meant to be someone called mr negative i have no idea who that is absolutely no idea and definitely going to see what that's going to mean you know for the coming game and uh, they've had a little tease of miles morales i've heard so i'm hopefully looking forward to learning more about that stuff as well and that could inspire me to maybe go down more avenues to try and find out more about spider-man that's kind of what i want this game to be and it's looking like it's doing that in the right direction and i think if they nail that by intriguing the players who don't know a lot about spider-man to find out more about him keeping it slick gameplay having the tone completely right, and if they do all those things that I'm expecting them to do with the development studio that's got it on their hands, I honestly think it will be one of the best superhero games out there, mainly for the fact as well, because it will be so fun to play and so fun to integrate with that story. 
But anyway, let me know what you think about the Insomniac Spider-Man. Are you looking forward to it? It's one of my most looking for, one of my most anticipated games of this year. I'm definitely looking forward to it and getting my PS4 out for September. Really, really looking forward to it. So let me know what you think about it. If you, you're excited, let me know in the comments below. Is there any other games you're excited for in the superhero franchise, superhero ideology that I forgot about to mention? Didn't mention 21. Are you looking forward to you know, the Marvel thing that's happening with uh, Square Enix? So you can look forward to see what they bring to the table. In my opinion, I'm the kind of person that's like, let's wait to get, let's get the Spider-Man game. I know it's not nothing to do with that MGU, but if they nailed this, then we can kind of focus on kind of the other what they can do similarly and differently to what the Spider-Man game does. But I think this is a key tentpole in what's going to be in the future of superhero action games, in my opinion. So thanks a lot for watching. Let me know, and I'll be interacting with you guys in the comments. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday for my Bethesda or Elder Scrolls video. Thank you.